This evening, John Ankerberg will examine what Roman Catholicism teaches concerning the doctrine of justification and what are the issues surrounding this doctrine that divide Catholics and Protestants today. The doctrine of justification deals with the question, how can a sinful person be accepted by a holy and righteous God? Both Roman Catholics and Protestants agree that this doctrine is important, since if a man seeks to be forgiven in a way in which he cannot be forgiven, then he won't be forgiven. Both Catholics and Protestants agree that the benefits and merits of Christ are necessary for a man to receive justification. But where Catholics and Protestants disagree is how do the merits of Christ become mine? Catholicism carried to its logical conclusion is a denial of justification by faith in the context of Romans 4 and 5 uh, because it involves works as a means of merit. And where we disagree is precisely there because we, we understand the scriptures to also say that those obey, or acts of obedience to the commandments are part of that process of justification. The Roman Catholic doctrine itself teaches that man cooperates by faith and works for redemption. Whereas biblical theology says it's by grace we have been saved through faith, not by ourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, mm -hmm. lest anyone should boast. As St. James says, faith alone is not enough. Faith without good works is insufficient because the justification that the Catholic Church talks about is not, as Luther taught, merely imputed. Walter, are you saying this? If anyone says that men are justified either by the sole imputation of the justice of Christ, are you saying that? Are you saying that a man is justified by the sole imputation of the justice of Christ? Romans 4, absolutely. Okay. Trent says that man's anathema. Whereas the Catholic Church is trying to say instead of imputation, it's rather a transformation of the inner person. That you ha and that's I, think, I think we agree that the Catholic no Church problem. is saying that. Yeah, we yeah, and, that. And, okay. What we're saying is, is that what the Scripture exactly in Romans 3 and 4 is saying. If God is saying something different than Trent at that point, then we should stick with the Scripture. We are justified by faith because faith is the beginning of human salvation, the foundation and the root of all justification, all right, let's stop right without there. which let's it is stop. impossible to please that, God. That, is it, that the is question the is, is it a beginning transaction or is it a final transaction? I think that's where we disagree. Right, uh, this is the point, what you just read. Faith is the beginning of the transaction, right? Mm -hmm. No, for by grace, past tense, you have already been saved mm -hmm. through faith, mm -hmm. not by yourselves not by anything working in you, mm -hmm. nothing like that, no transformation in you. John's guests are Father Mitchell Pacwa, an ordained Roman Catholic priest who is a member of the Society of Jesus, a Jesuit. He has an earned Doctor of Philosophy degree and is currently a professor at Loyola University in Chicago. John's second guest is Protestant scholar Dr. Walter Martin, founder of the Christian Research Institute in California. Please join us for this discussion. The whole idea of the New Testament and the whole idea of the Reformation was, look, you cannot get right standing with God mm -hmm. by human effort mm -hmm. or by any sacerdotal system. You're going to get it by a relationship to Christ. And you said that yesterday very forcefully. You said you were trying to teach people not what, but who. Mm -hmm. And that the, the core of Christianity was a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. by which we know we have passed out of death into life. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the crux of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. When the Reformers said, you are justified by faith, they were not trying to say the sinful nature was eradicated or man mm -hmm. didn't need it. No, they sure. weren't saying that. Right. They were saying, this is what God did for you. You can't do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Say, that this is the point that I think uh, we have to recognize. The moment that you take Trent's position mm -hmm. and really ram it home, mm -hmm. you run smack into Romans 4 and you run smack into 1 John, which tell you Christ is the propitiation for all our sins and not for ours only, for the sins of the whole world. We're text, justified. Texts which are quoted in Trent. Okay? I know. And, and the thing that, um, a couple things on that. Um, first of all, I don't. I agree with Trent.
that it's not a confusion of justification and sanctification. You know, that to see that this is, you know, because it is part of a relationship. But you cannot, but you're not going to make the mistake of making justification, Romans 4, mm -hmm. which is an act of God. Right. Pure and simple. Ab absolutely. You can't make that as something intrinsic to man because he infuses grace into us. Then you've got sanctification and justification as two parts of the same thing. Well, and that's, I guess, exactly what I, I that's agree That's exactly with. what Trent did. I know, and that's exactly what I agree with. We have been redeemed in Christ. Absolutely. We have been justified no by choice. faith. Absolutely. Okay, the justification by works, which you're referring to, is mm -hmm. progressive in the life of the believer. Mm-hmm as a result of sanctification, because it's the Spirit that works in us to transform us into the image of Christ. Absolutely. That's true. Because of that, we are able to perform good works. Well, I don't see where Trent says something different, except in saying that that is part of the same process of justification. Well, let me give you Trent and see if we can define it here. If anyone says that by faith alone the sinner is justified in such wise as to mean that nothing else is required, which is what Walter is saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Nothing on our part is required. Jesus did it all. It doesn't depend on us or what God does in us at that point. It depends on Jesus. Okay? Oh. Trent is saying, if anyone says that by aspect. faith alone the sinner the is justified in such wise as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate, that man's got to cooperate in order for the obtaining of the grace of justification, that man's to be anathema. We're saying that man does not have to do something in cooperation to have God justify him. You don't have to say yes to the grace? I do, you, do you I, have to say yes to the grace of Christ or not? I would say, for by grace are you say through faith. You have do to you accept. have to make that act of faith by yes. your will? Yes. That is something that you are doing. That is your will. By grace. By, by grace. grace, prevenient grace, but it is your will doing it. But because it is Christ that gives us a command to repent. Yeah, but if God doesn't jiggle your willer by grace, and that's, you aren't going to do it. And, and again, the, the Council of Trent does not teach otherwise. Let me give you an example here. Let's, let's stick with the actual teachings of the Catholic Church. I'm trying. Walter, are you saying this? If anyone says that men are justified either by the sole imputation of the justice of Christ, are you saying that? Are you saying that a man is justified by the sole imputation of the justice of Christ? Romans 4, absolutely. Okay. Trent says that man's anathema. Okay. What do they mean by the well, word not imputation? The, not the way he's explaining it. Yeah. I, I don't agree with what your explanation mm -hmm. is, but I know what you're saying. Well, see, one, I think the, I the like key it. word there is imputation. Okay. Imputation is... And in other words, that they're saying that it's just something that is you know, put over you in a legal way that's a simple declaration in the way that the um, uh, nominalist ph uh, philosophers just would impute something to a person. Whereas the Catholic Church is trying to say instead of imputation, it's rather a transformation of the inner person. That you ha and that's I, think, what this, I think we agree that the Catholic no Church problem. is saying that. Yeah, we yeah, and, that. And, okay. What we're saying is, is that what the Scripture exactly in Romans 3 and 4 is saying. If God is saying something different than Trent at that point, then we should stick with the Scripture. Abraham well, if, believed God. If that's the only Scripture, but that's not the only Scripture. And, see, and, that, and that's precisely okay. the Roman Catholic Church. Let me put it the other way. Mm -hmm. is the fact is that, um, is that Protestants have at least an explanation for James 2, okay? And that will reconcile that with Romans 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have never heard a Roman Catholic reconcile Romans 3 and 4. Ah, okay. Did you um, read the rest of the uh, chapters in that uh, sixth session of Trent? The way they, they deal with that in, this, in the same paragraph is, we are justified by faith because faith is the beginning of human salvation, the foundation and the root of all justification, all right, let's stop right without there. which it let's is stop. impossible to please that, God. That, is it, that the is question the is, is it a beginning transaction or is it a final transaction? I think that's where we disagree. Right, uh, this is the point. What you just read. Faith is the beginning of the transaction, right? Mm -hmm. No. For by grace, past tense, you have already been saved mm -hmm. through faith. Correct. Mm -hmm. Not by yourselves not by anything working in you, mm -hmm. nothing like that, no transformation in you. You have been saved by grace outside yourself, which reaches down, redeems you, and then mm -hmm. 
justifies you and the transformation of the Spirit coming into us in the new birth mm -hmm. makes us in the image of Christ. We become new creations in Christ Jesus. What, tr what, excuse me, what Trent is saying is that faith is the beginning of the transaction of justification. Mm -hmm. But what the text is saying is that salvation is by grace, that's the initial act of God. Grace proceeds from mercy. Mm -hmm. Mercy proceeds from love, mm -hmm. the nature of God. All right, now we're transformed by the power of grace. Mm -hmm. That's why the emphasis in Ephesians 2 is, by grace you have already been saved. You're not working for it. Mm -hmm. See, this Catholic catechism here, since Vatican II, uh, specifically says that Paul's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I just... I just cannot understand how Trent or they can say it. Quote, mm -hmm. If we follow Christ, we shall never place anyone or anything above God. Right. Mm -hmm. We shall love and serve Him alone. Mm -hmm. Right. And in doing this, we shall save our soul. We shall earn heaven. Mm -hmm. We shall have happiness with God forever. Mm -hmm. But if you can earn heaven, mm -hmm. if righteousness comes by the efforts of man, mm -hmm. Paul says, Christ died for nothing. If, though that at the same time Christ, in, for instance, in Matthew chapter 6, yeah. you know, talks about you know, us having merits, you know, merits by you know, fasting, merits by prayer, mer merits by almsgiving, and Jesus himself uses that term, then is there not necessarily some form of merit? Can I, can I ask a question in, rabbinic, in rabbinical rhetoric? No. What is the context of Matthew 6? To whom is it addressed specifically? He's addressing it to the disciples in the context of the crowds to explain how not to pray, how not to give alms, and how not to fast. And all of it is in the context of Judaism as it was then abused. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we're moving out of the concept of law, the covenant of law, which emphasized meritorious behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay, Job was a righteous man. Why? Yeah, well, well, he not only believed God, but he also offered sacrifices. Viewpoint changes in the New Testament because you are no longer under a covenant of law, mm -hmm. as were the Jews. Now, you're under covenant of grace. Mm -hmm. Grace does not exclude obedience to God, mm -hmm. but grace is what redeems, not the concept of piling up merits. Okay, and again, Trent in the same paragraph says that too. You no, know, it is said we are we are said to be justified gratuities, gratuitously because none of the things that precede justification, whether faith or works, merit the grace of justification. But, okay? but, but we don't, so works. we don't teach in Catholicism that you can merit the great of the grace of justification at all. And Trent specifically rejects that. But there is room for merit. Because you ke Christ Himself but gives not, that room by saying not, that you need to merit properly. Uh, but not Improper as a means of redemption. Wrong. But not as a means of redemption. That's what they say here. Yeah. Or, then, it does not merit okay. the grace of justification. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, mm -hmm. then the act of justification itself outside of man mm -hmm. is sufficient. Mm -hmm. If you can't do anything to improve justification, okay. what God did in Romans 4 with Abraham is kaput. It's over. Okay. And here again... That the term justification, and here's again where we get a disagreement, right. is that they've de 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 defined the term justification to include the acts of love without which you cannot know God. The, uh, you, you, they that was my obeying point. the commandments. That was my point. Yeah. They, what they did was, under justification, which Paul doesn't do, mm -hmm. he teaches okay. sanctification separately after redemption. Not but, as a means of redemption. But at the same time says that unless you have those acts of sanctification, you cannot be saved. Because they're the fruit or the evidence of the justification. Necessary to be saved. No. Oh, uh, Correct? No, can, can you know God without love? No, you cannot know God without love, and you cannot fulfill the will of God or the law of God without love. And can you know Christ without obeying all His commandments? Yeah. Because you do it all every day of your life, and so do I. Now, what does Jesus himself, though, say? Now, now, now don't, don't get him out of context. He <laughs> said, if you love me, keep my commandments. No. He that keeps my commandments is he that loves me. Mm -hmm. But he made provision for the fact that we as mortals, yeah. obviously, in, we sin. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be hearing confessions. That's right. All right? That's so right. people sin, you give them absolution in the name of Christ, right? right? right. Because, right. because they're imperfect. That's right. They're failures, they're sinners like everybody else. Right. You and I are too. Right. So, our salvation 
is by grace. Yes. Through faith. Yes. And unto the production of works, which testify to what God did for us, not what we did for ourselves. And where we disagree is precisely there because we, we understand the scriptures to also say that those obey, acts of obedience to the commandments are part of that process of justification whereby if we omit that at any point, if we, you know, it, it's, again, you know, like, like uh, 1 John 5 makes a distinction in different kinds of sin. But if one commits serious sin, one can cut oneself off from Christ and, you know, thereby lose one's justification. But that's the Arminian position. I'm, I'm familiar with this. Yeah. This is my, not my point. Yeah. My point is deeper than that position. Mm -hmm. The point that I'm trying to make mm -hmm. is that if we're justified by, freely by grace, mm -hmm. if we're justified by faith, if we're transformed by the power yes. of God, we become new creations in mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. If all of this takes place, it is by God's grace. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going mm -hmm. to say, if you're going to go on from there as Trent does mm -hmm. and talk about the act of sanctification and obedience to the commandments of God and mm -hmm. so forth, you really got a dead end because the scripture says in James, which you're fond of quoting, mm -hmm. whosoever offendeth in one point of the law mm -hmm. is guilty of all. Mm -hmm. Now, you haven't committed adultery, mm -hmm. but you've lied. Mm -hmm. You're guilty of the law. Mm -hmm. The whole thing comes crashing down on your head. Mm -hmm. Now, what is sin but transgression of the law? Mm -hmm. All unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. You and I and everybody else, mm -hmm. professing Christians, perform acts of unrighteousness in Absolutely. specific categories, whether mortal or venial, we transgress the law. Right. By transgressing the law, we testify that the law is holy, righteous, just, and good, and that salvation has to be by grace because we ain't keeping it. And uh, again, right? The Catholic, right, because right. the Catholics don't deny <laughs> that it's by grace, yeah. the grace of Christ. But the thing that we have difficulty in going with you to say that I can claim to be saved is Paul, the great teacher of faith, refuses to claim that he's saved. He won't teach that about himself. He where, says, where I have to, for instance, in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, yeah. chapter 9. I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded he's able to keep what I've committed to him against that day. He, Neither death nor life, angels, principalities nor powers, height nor depth, anything in all creation shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's security. The one, the one thing that he doesn't include in that list is himself. And that's why... I am persuaded. No, no, he doesn't include himself as one of the things that can keep him from separating from Christ. So he says here in 1 Corinthians 9, but um, I do not run, so, uh, and certainly, so that uh, and, I've, uh, and I don't fight like one who beats the air, but I uh, keep, under, keep my body uh, in subjection, bringing it to subjection, uh, lest by any means... Uh, after having preached to others, I myself am disapproved. I don't, and, and see, he, that's where I disagree. I don't think he's saying that. I think it's quite well, when different. He says, and I'm not arguing Calvinism yeah. either. I'm simply saying yeah. I don't think that a man who writes multiple passages in his 13 epistles mm -hmm. about what it is to pass out of death into life, yes. what it is to be justified by grace, justified by faith, and he keeps using the word saved in the past tense. Yes. I can't believe that the man in one verse, is going to say, lest I myself, after having done all of this, I'm now unsaved. Well, and, and the thing that, that's again where we disagree, that he can say both, and this, one, this is the kind of being fiddlers on the roof, keeping this crazy balance that, you know, Catholics are trying to do. That, yes, you have to have confidence in Christ, and to commit despair is a sin. And to say to despair of Christ in any way is something that we do not you know, advocate at all. But at the same time, like Paul, who is concerned that he be disqualified or, or you know, taken away, cast away from the race or disapproved, that we also have to say, you know, I cannot be confident that I am faithful now or will always be faithful. But the word is not lost there in the Greek. But, Disapprove from a race. It doesn't mean lost. It doesn't mean lost no. as such, but it does not mean win either. So okay, again. we need to have a final wrap-up statement from both of you. I'll let you go longer than we should. And I want a final wrap-up statement. Father Pacwa? Okay, the, the thing that I would say is that you know, Catholicism is trying to protect two things. On one hand, the first and foremost grace of Christ as absolutely essential, and human will 
to be able to accept that grace. And then I guess a third thing, to see that this process of justification is one of complete transformation of the person. And until we meet Christ, we can't be positive that we're saved, but we, neither should we despair of it. You know, we can't be in, the, in despair either. Walter? Catholicism carried to its logical conclusion is a denial of justification by faith in the context of Romans 4 and 5 uh, because it involves works as a means of merit. The Roman Catholic doctrine itself teaches that man cooperates by faith and works for redemption, whereas biblical theology says it's by grace we have been saved through faith, not by ourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works, mm -hmm. lest anyone should boast. So for me, to carry it to its logical conclusion, I, having gone to Catholic schools as you have and been trained in it, know perfectly well that I was taught, and I'm sure you were too, that you have faith in Jesus Christ and you work like a beaver. Because if you don't, purgatory. Yeah, at least. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> All right, with that, let's, uh, let's get into... Uh, <laughs> at least. <laughs> that. Thanks for joining you us. You got that. And, uh, <laughs> See? Join us again next week.